Hi, my name is Clemens Reiner, and in this video I'm going to explain the Soge T solution and service OneShare. The Soge T solution OneShare is built on top of the Microsoft Azure Cloud, and it expands the capabilities of Azure for development and test teams while executing their work. When a development and test team uses the cloud for their main activities, it already brings some great benefits. It lowers the costs, you've got less risk, you can deliver faster value. But what teams also need is have some insight in how they are using the Azure resources in relation with their team activities. They also need some great self-servicing capabilities so every team member can set up new machines, can set up new infrastructures. And you want to have control how everything works together. OneShare brings those capabilities to the Azure for development and test teams. So let me very briefly show you a demo how that looks like. So OneShare is, is, is also built on top of O365. So we've got three components of OneShare. We've got O365, the portal, which also can be used for documentations. And we are a great fan of OneNote when using this one. We also have Visual Studio Online for our backlog, for our, our source repository, and for, for our bug tracking and test case management. And that's what you see in the upper left corner. So every team member has access to this portal, has access to the Visual Studio Online account, and together with that, we also have an Azure subscription for every project within OneShare. So, and all three components are connected, and this gives the team great flexibility. The major part of the OneShare portal is insight in what are your machines, what are machines, what are they doing. And that's what you see in the middle at this moment. We've got three different kind of machines. We've got build agents, and that one is at this moment going to be started. And that's our ALM infrastructure machines. We've got a development and test machines, and those are for the, for the team members. And every machine is built from a default image, from a default template. So everybody has a standardized environment ready to start working immediately. And for sure, we also have our test environments, which are also via a standardized template created for this project. Now within this uh, information, you have in one eye side information, what are your machines are doing? Are they started? Are they stopping? What are they doing? What you also see in the middle is the usage. And the usage, it gives you some idea about your estimation. If you're within your estimate or outside your estimate. So as with every project, you need to do some budget calculations. What are my machine costs? The same is for teams who are using Azure. And now I can set up, for example, a developer machine who works 30 hours a week that his machine will be on for 40 hours in seven days. And when he crosses that boundary of your estimate, the, the, the state of that machine will be marked red in the OneShare portal and a notification will be sent. And this triggers some new budget negotiations of or some negotiation with the developer that he should take care more of his machine. And that's what you see also in the small graph which hovers over the portal, what has happened with this machine during the past seven days. You also can start and stop a machine straight from it in the portal just by clicking the start or the stop button. And you also can make a connection via RDP with that machine to start connecting and working on top of it. Also to help the different team members to do their work properly and to be in balance with their activities is that the, the OneShare portal has also a schedule behind it. And this schedule can be configured by every team member without having the knowledge about PowerShell or any Azure related resources. He can just configure that one straight within the portal. And what you can see, these machines will be stopped at five o'clock and a notification will be sent to that user that his machine will be stopped and that he has a, the, the time to snooze the machine, the stopping of this action, or he can completely dismiss the stopping of this action, giving the flexibility to start to do some overwork or to do 
skipping this stopping immediately. Now what the portal also provides is a very easy way for team members to create a new environment. For example, when I want to create a new environment for myself, I just can simply can select a template and this template is based on pre-configured information for this machine. So a team member is very easily capable of configuring new machines. And as you see the message right now, the creation of this machine is placed in the queue and on the top of the virtual machine list you can see the action for creating this machine is queued. What you also see is that also this machine immediately has a schedule behind it. Now the creation of those machines are based on either a template and these templates are provided by the Cloud Factory of Society and maintained by the Cloud Factory of Society. But also uh, a team can create them themselves straight within the portal via the template properties. And in this project you can see we already created two templates. When I say create new, I can configure for my team a new template based on either a user image or a Windows image. And the user image are really project specific images or either an image from the OneShare Cloud Factory which maintains those kinds of images. And what you also see over here, here are some more technical information about the size, services, affinity groups and that kind of information that's n now abstracted away from the default portal user. So they only have to fill in the username and password for that machine and it will be created within minutes. Now when you give team members so much power to create more machines in that easy way, you also want to give them insight in, in how they are using, how they are creating machines. And that's actually what you see on the right side over here. These are the real Azure costs of this Azure subscription this team uses. And these Azure costs are populated on a daily basis. And what you very good can see is that this graph goes up and down. And this is really, uh, we switch on machines when we need it and we switch off when we don't need it. And that's what you see in the middle over here. On Saturday and Sunday, all our machines are almost all off and we don't pay any money. Now when I expand this graph, and this is actually also good information for team members that they have insight in how they are consuming Azure for their projects. Over here, but you can see those big spikes in the middle on a monthly basis. Those are the user licenses we pay as a team via our Azure subscription for our Visual Studio Online accounts. And while a team also can create those licenses themselves, you also want to have insight in how many licenses we have for those teams available. And this is what you also can see straight within a portal. You can see all the team members when they are assigned and what kind of licenses they have. So you really have a straight eyesight of, okay, he's not doing anything, maybe we should skip his license and in that way. The same thing, uh, what you also wanted to see is what are the real team activities. And that's what you see also in the right side, straight from Visual Studio Online, we get all the team activities in the portal and then we can see what happened in this project. Some builds are executed by the team members and some virtual machines are started and stopped or either created and deleted by team members. And this information is, is really valuable to have some good feeling about what the team is doing. And together with that information, we also provide information about the builds because we have a built info built machine up and running on Azure. You saw it up here, it stopped right now. And uh, we executed, let's say, eight builds today. Uh, that's good, it was on with the purpose. But during the Christmas days, as you see in the middle of here, uh, we didn't do any work, we didn't queue any builds, and 
I expect that the machine would be off at that time too. And then we can have a look at that, what happened over time with my machines in the history. And that's also something the machines calculates on the background, what happens with my machines. And this gives you a good ID if we are doing it a proper way. For example, this machine is very clean. It's on for 13 hours a day. It's a hard worker and it stopped during the weekends. And that's what we see for all the calculations over here. These are just fresh new machines. Over here, Martijn just works part time for this project, the same as Niels. And for every machine, I can very easily see okay, is the pattern okay for this machine? We also can configure the proper properties of those machines separately. So, what you see over here, a team member can configure his category, his estimate, and for sure his schedule very easily without having the knowledge of PowerShell to do that. So this is the small demo of uh, OneShare. Let's jump back to the presentation and give you some small overview. When we're talking about the OneShare portal, you saw we have different kind of machines, the team member desktop, the dev test environments, and the ALM tooling. All of them are available via templates, which are maintained by our cloud factory. This gives the teams very, very compatible uh, self-servicing capabilities, or we can also hook on the cloud factory and then we have control and we have maintenance of our templates. We've got a good dashboard, we can see the scheduling and we can see what our real Azure costs are. This together beneath there with our one share management of the cloud factory, we also can provide a, a, a service level agreement on a specific environment. For example, when you want a, a, a very sophisticated environment for proof of concept or either an acceptance test environment, the cloud factory can give a, a, software, a service level agreement on top of that one and maintain that environment as if it was your production environment. And these are the three different levels we, we actually provide beneath OneShare for your environments. You can do everything yourself that can be done by either the Microsoft delivered or uh, by Azure operating system images or either the images we built within our cloud factory with the knowledge of SOGT in there. And you can get those in your environment and you can create your environments for them there. On Flavor B, we also can support you by creating an environment. For example, when you need an Active Directory with Deer Sync and a SharePoint farm, we can help you with that and set it up and then you are in control yourself again. Or we can say, I want an SLA, my environment is that important, I want my dev and test teams to uh, be able to access the environment constantly then you can ask us for an SLA and we will maintain that environment for you. So that's one share. And, and then you can think about the scenarios. What are the scenarios? What are the capabilities we can do with our development test teams at the Azure Cloud, O365, Visual Studio Online, and what kind of scenarios are there? And I've put several together. And actually, you are already measuring several teams with one share. And this is the first team, and this is actually the case for OneShare. This team is a, is a SharePoint development team, which have a, has a dev test and acceptance environment up and running in Azure. I think 15 virtual machines, and they are always on. And I don't have seen any team activity happening in this project, but we're already paying 40 euros a day constantly without happening anything. And this doesn't give the manager a good feeling. He's constantly paying the Azure costs and he doesn't see any value. So he is maybe a little bit disappointed. And that's why we built OneShare, is giving insight and giving this team the capabilities to really pay per use and only switch on machines when they need it. So the Cloud Factory also helps you with setting up very complex environments. 
And this is, for example, a complex environment which has been set up for by our Cloud Factory. And this team is helped by the Cloud Factory via OneShare to set up these kinds of environments. There's also one service OneShare offers. It can help you with setting up complex environments. Another case for OneShare is, for example, a maintenance project. It's not always on. We only switch on the machines, and that's where you see the idle time in the middle of this graph. We only switch on the machines when we need to do some maintenance. Every machine is stopped right now. There's no schedule needed. And we switch on the machines when we need it. And this really pays off, and we have the benefit of using Azure and OneShare in this scenario. Another example is the proof of concept we did for this customer. We set up the complex infrastructure at SharePoint 2013. And for this proof of concept, we needed to have multiple clients and the customer needs to access the, those clients and create those clients themselves. So we created one virtual machine image for the SharePoint client so they can create an environment themselves can start playing with it, put some scheduling behind it, and switch machines on and off. And after the proof of concept was done, we deleted the complete machine set, and the customer is really happy with it. Now, I already mentioned it. Uh, our project is using it for project documentation. Because we're using O365, uh, we've got a SharePoint site. We can use all the capabilities SharePoint offers us for maintaining our project documentations. We are using the OneNote for it. And actually you also can put in there the, the news feed for configurations or discussions and all the capabilities O365 offers you. And that's one also a capability of one share in there. We're also using it for training scenarios. So uh, 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 a teacher creates one image and all the students get a virtual machine based on that image and the machines are switched on only during training courses and we put an estimate behind it for example three hours in a week and we expect that the machine won't be on for much longer and this is what you see over here and also this training course uses the full capabilities of one share to have of, of O365 to have the discussions and have the training documentation in there. Now one, one scenario where you really see the benefits of the scheduling behind it is in this, this case. Just before uh, we switched on one share for this project, um, we let it run the metering going on and then you can see it was paying at least 60 euros a day constantly uh, for for all their Azure consumption, then we had a talk with a, with a, with this project team, and we had a discussion. Okay, when do you need those machines? Do they need to be always on? Can we put some scheduling behind it? The manager wasn't happy that the costs were that high, and then you can see we lowered the cost by seventy percent, and only in during the weekends the machines were off. And during the days, the machines were only on for eight hours a day. And this made the team very happy because they lowered the costs. They didn't have any notion actually that they were paying that much. And by putting one share in place, they had that insight in how they are using the Azure resources. And, the, and the, actually the manager was that happy that probably the next project also will start using Azure for their development and test activities. So those were several scenarios you can think about where development and test team can have benefits of using Azure, of using Visual Studio Online, of using O365 and all grouped together by the OneShare solution of Society, supported by the Cloud Factory when they need specific capabilities for environments. So you can think about we're doing it for testing only. I want to have my test infrastructure set up and my test team is running those environments. That's one scenario and our Cloud Factory will help you with setting up such an environment and you can switch on and switch off those environments. 
We even have HP ALM tooling behind it, so you can also use your tools which you are most comfortable with. And on the other side, you can do the full cloud scenario in the demo I showed you. That's the full cloud scenario. It's building a cloud system and every team member is very easy onboarded and is actually active in the first day they enter the team room. And that's the one share scenario for DevOps. So it expands really the whole spectrum of all processes you can think about by giving insights, self-servicing and control on top of the Microsoft Azure platform for development and test teams. And in that way, we're trying to provide the business needs by being as flexible and agile and fast as possible by using the cloud for our development and test teams. So the possibilities are actually limitless. You can think about all the scenarios and just start by rethinking what kind of proof of concept can I do right now by consuming my Azure core, my Azure, my Azure is, uh, subscription and we can help you by providing insight and delivering faster value to your customers. You can find more information on socialt.com slash one share and can reach me on the lower right corner on my blog, on my Twitter account or either in my email address. Thanks for watching.